Father, we thank you, we glorify your holy name, we worship you, Lord Father, we say, hallowed be thy holy name. Father, we thank you, we honor you, we praise you, we thank you for teaching us, we thank you for feeding us, we receive your word daily, we receive the food that is able to build us up daily, and that is able to give us all our inheritance among those that are sanctified. Father, our hearts and minds are open to continue to hear from you. Glory, honor, adoration be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. In our old video, we dealt with the law. In the last video, we dealt with the law, the offerings, and the Passover. And the Passover feast. Praise the name of the Lord. In this video, we'll be talking about the wilderness wandering and the review of the laws. And this will be seen in the books of Numbers and Deuteronomy. The book of Numbers, we are going to resume from where Exodus left off. Remember, we stopped in Exodus chapter 24, talking about the law, the commandment, the judgment, the ordinances. It's a book of arrested progress. That is, they blew it. Children of Israel blew it. In that, they were supposed to understand the way, supposed to be happy, to be rejoicing for being freed from slavery. But they complain every day. And while it took only 40 days to get Israel out of Egypt, from the time they were taken out of Egypt to where God gave them the law to this very place, it was only 40 days. It took 40 years to get Egypt out of Israel. For although they have left Egypt, their mind was still in Egypt. So, what is the significance of this? Most of the time, yes, we are in Christ. But we need to renew our mind so that we remove the world from our mind. That is the essence of renewing your mind so that you remove the world from your mind. Now, at Kadesh Barnea, after 40 days, Moses sent out 12 spies, which means they were very close to the promised land. And he just after 40 days, he sent out 12 spies. 10 of the 12 came back terrified. They came back terrified. And that can be seen from Numbers 13, from verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they have searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it, it's a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there, were, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own eyes as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. They came back terrified, and they came back with evil reports. Because truly, they were giants. They were Nephilims. They were people at bones, just like 
Genesis 6. People that have been that have been demonized and grown the way giants. But there's an error. God is bigger than all. While we understand that they were giants, it is God that was with them. After 40 days, Moses sent out 12 spies. 10 of them came back terrified. And that, like as we said, can be seen in number 13 from verse 31 to 33. But Joshua and Caleb said, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it, for the Lord is with us. Only Joshua and Caleb recognized the value, the abilities of the Almighty. For they said, we can, over, we can win. We will overcome them. They are just bread for us. And why? Because the Lord is with us. If God is with you, there is nobody. If God is greater than the world. And God is greater than all the giants. Praise the name of the Lord. The people murmured against Moses and God threatened to wipe them out and create a new generation of Israel. God threatened to wipe them out. But Moses interceded for them. Moses prayed for them. Moses interceded for them. Nevertheless, God promised only Joshua and Caleb and the children less than 20 to enter the promised land. Nevertheless, God said it's only those that are less than 20 years old, Joshua and Caleb, that will enter. God didn't kill them, but he made them to wander around until all were dead. It took 40 years. It took 40 years. Why Moses was denied entry into the promised land? Moses was also denied entry. Why? Now the Bible says, at Rephidim, Moses was told to strike the rock for water. That was in Exodus 17, verse verse 6. Moses did, and water came when the people murmured. Moses spoke to God, and God said, strike the rock. Moses did, and water came, and the people drank, and they were filled. Then again, the same thing occurred at a place called Mirabah. Again, this time, Moses was told to speak to the rock for water to come out. But Moses was angry with the people because they were complaining and murmuring and complaining. Sometimes, your brothers and sisters, your brethren, can force you, can make you to commit sin. This is what happened. They were murmuring and complaining. They were disturbing Moses, and Moses was angry. So instead of speaking to the rock as God commanded, Moses struck the rock again. Moses struck the rock again. And water came out. The people drank, but God was not happy with Moses. So God told Moses, for you to have done this, you will not enter the promised land because you have misrepresented me to the people. I wasn't angry with them, but you proved to the people that I was angry with them at this point in time. So, And the rock represented a type. That is, the rock was Christ. Now, there is what we call a type. 
There are a lot of things that happen in the Old Testament that looks ordinary. But in the New Testament, they, 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 they were not ordinary. They were not ordinary. For example, the Bible says the rock was Christ. The rock was Christ and will not be struck twice. Jesus was struck but only once. So for Moses to have struck the rock twice, he has misrepresented the lineage, the legacy, the prophetic movement of God. And for that reason, Moses was denied entry into the promised land due to misrepresentation. The book of Deuteronomy. The laws reviewed. The bridge between the first four books, which were outside the land, and the next seven books, which were in the land. Deuteronomy talks about the first four books. It's just like a bridge between the first four books and the next seven books. Deuteronomy talks about the first four books from the beginning up to that moment and then continued for the next seven books of the Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. The great commandment. The great commandment. Jesus emphasized this so much. And that can be seen in Deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 4 to 5. The book of Deuteronomy also talks about the songs of Moses and the death of Moses. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's look at the great commandment. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. That is the great commandment. And it's not only in the Old Testament. Because the great commandment that Jesus gave is the same, that thou shalt love thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Because it's very important. Do you love God with all your heart? Because if you do, you won't be thinking that this is what they've done to me. This is what this brother has done to me, like an association in a church, and then I'm going away. No, because the church belongs to God. And if you love God with all your heart, you will worship him with all your heart. You will know that everything you do, is, it belongs to God. Everything you do, you do unto God. You sweep the church, you do unto God. You clean the tables, you do unto God. You preach, you do unto God. You worship, you do unto God. It's not unto men. He said, Thou shalt love thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. He now said, for you to know how important it is, he said, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. These words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sitted, sittest in thy house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down. And when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets 
between their eyes. It's indirectly saying that it's very, very important. You must keep this. Present this. Always. Keep it in your heart. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Remember Jesus said, this new commandment I give unto you, which is the great commandment. He said, Thou shalt love thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Then also, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, if you do this, you have fulfilled the law. Why is it important to love God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your soul? He is your maker. There is nothing we drag. There is nothing we can seek. He made us. And we are to love him with all our hearts. Do you love God with all your heart? Then when you come to the presence of God, focus on him alone. No matter what you do in the church, no matter what you do when you are going out, no matter what you do when you are coming in, know that all you do in the name of Jesus Christ. Love your God with all your heart. Worship Him. Glorify His holy name. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. We love you with all our hearts. We love you with all our soul. We love you with all our mind. Father, we honor you. We adore you. We praise you. We say glory, glory, glory be unto your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.